Nadira, thank you very much. Welcome to what I think is a very exciting announcement. It's a project that we call Uplink, and in a week when we've seen calls for actions rather than words, this is a real uh, action aimed at engaging the global public in what we think will be a very exciting platform. I'm delighted to introduce a stellar panel. We're joined by the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohammed. We are joined by the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab, the global chief executive officer of Deloitte, Puneet Ranjan, Mark Hawkins, chief financial officer at Salesforce, Kate Benken, vice president and lead of Microsoft Philanthropies, and also by my colleague Dominic Waré, who heads our Center for Global Public Goods at the World Economic Forum. We will be hearing from all of them on what they think this platform can deliver, and then we'll have a chance for questions at the end. It's being live streamed, so welcome to everyone joining us online. And I'm going to start by asking uh, the Deputy Secretary General to come to the podium and uh, share her vision and expectation for Uplink. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Schwab, our partners, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and many friends in the room. Uh, welcome. This is really, this is going to be really exciting, and I've been waiting for this since uh, Professor Schwab told me about it in South Africa a few um, weeks ago. It's been four years since we had the groundbreaking adoption of the SDGs, um, and a few meters away, right here in our halls. So this really is uh, for us a memorable stock-taking event um, as well as we go four years into the SDGs. Look at what we're birthing still after the goals. The past two days, we've gathered again to take um, stock of the SDGs. And although we know we're not where we ought to be, we are in fact off track. Um, with some of the more tragic news of global hunger being on the rise just when we thought that we had been able to do something about it, and almost half a billion people remaining in extreme poverty by 2030, if we somehow just don't change the way that we are addressing some of these issues um, uh, to get back on track. We've also heard, as we had the, clim uh, the Climate Change Summit, the greenhouse gas emissions continuing to increase. One thing that's abundantly clear is that a just globalization that's really inclusive will need technology. The accelerating emergence of new technologies offers the potential to advance our SDGs and to meet the needs of a fast-changing world. But there are also risks on the horizon, and that must be navigated, particularly around labor dislocation and the exacerbation of existing inequalities. We're already seeing that many new technologies and services based on artificial intelligence mainly benefit those who have the most, leaving behind many who are already worse off and even putting them at more risk. With this in mind, the SG and I both echo the call from the UN high-level panel on digital cooperation for innovations that are people-centered and aligned with the SDGs. So it's heartening to see that many young entrepreneurs are already finding new solutions to help address the world's increasingly complex challenges, going beyond borders into some of the exacerbating situations we have with conflict, migration, um, and climate change. Indeed, the world has got no shortage of creative ideas. In fact, in the last week, its young people have not only advocated for climate action, but they've also brought the solutions to the table. We still lack pathways that would enable us to go to scale and that would include youth in a really meaningful way as we scale up. The value of platforms that connects companies and citizens, young entrepreneurs and technical partners, students and venture firms, startups and universities is now greater than ever. There's a huge momentum and a deep thirst for it. Initiatives as Gen U, the UN Global Compact for Young, SDG Innovators Program, SAPS Next Gen, and now Uplink are particularly critical to support innovation for the SDGs, including leveraging our youth initiative and the private sector investment that we need so much of. With an initial pilot of Uplink to be ready in time for the United Nations Oceans Conference in 2020, your initiative offers a huge opportunity to support young people's engagement. And it has been. Everybody speaks to the COP, the Ocean COP, nature-based solutions, a lot of excitement around this. More than 1,400 voluntary commitments on ocean action that have been made since our 2017 conference. So innovation can further support this. We will need more initiatives like this, but today let's just celebrate that this is happening in GA Week to give us greater um, uh, uh, inspiration to do the things that we need to do at scale, more in local areas, 
um, and in, the, in, in people's lives, particularly the young ones. We look forward to that reality starting yesterday. Thank you. Deputy Secretary General, thank you very much. Now a chance to hear from Professor Klaus Schwab, the Founder and Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. Deputy Secretary General, first I want to express our appreciation for the trust you are giving us and um, the confidence we all have that with this project we can make a real significant contribution with having two objectives in mind. So first, what we have seen this week, multifold activities. We are walking the talk now, but maybe we walk not fast enough. So there are multiple initiatives, and the question comes up, how can we integrate all those initiatives? How can we create a factor of aggregation and amplification and acceleration? But second, as you mentioned, how can we integrate all those young people who have great ideas, see startups, innovative universities, and so on? How can we create a mass movement? So the project we present today, and I want to thank our technology partners, the project which we present today has actually as an objective to be an instrument for mass integration, for crowd engagement. As you know, the World Economic Forum is a multi-stakeholder cooperation. For us, this project is so significant because it integrates the missing dimension into the multi-stakeholder concept, the people on the ground who have great ideas, who would like to be not only enthusiastic, but to be co-owners and to be co-operators in the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals. So the idea is first to build such a platform, and it will be operational um, in a first version in Davos next year, and then during the next year to replicate this platform for all the other SDGs. Thank you, and I can tell you in the whole history of the forum, which is celebrating its 50th year next, um, in 2020, I never felt so excited and I never was engaged so much into a project like this one. Thank you very much. And bringing this, uh, this initiative to life and powering it are partners, uh, one of which is Deloitte, and lucky to be joined by Pinit Rinjen, who's the Chief Executive Officer. Deputy Secretary General, uh, Professor Klaus, as you said, it's really exciting to be here with you uh, on this project, and Deloitte is very honored uh, to collaborate with you. Um, Deloitte believes as an organization that business exists uh, to do more than just earn a profit. In fact, we believe passionately, passionately, that business is a force of good. And every day, 300,000 Deloitte professionals uh, do that in two ways. They uphold the public trust and they contribute their skills and capabilities to try and address some of the most difficult societal and client issues. And we've learned a, a number of lessons along the way. One of the key lessons that we've learned, uh, particularly in recent times, is that we can't do this alone. That is why a project like this is so important. And um, a great example of that, in terms of collaborating, connecting for impact, is the work that we do for the UN. We've been uh, associated with the UN for about 25 years, and we're very proud of it. And it is a whole host of projects that we do for the UN, both pro bono as well as paid. And it has taught us uh, the power of collaboration. That's why I'm so excited to be here to collaborate with WEF, to collaborate with Salesforce. Salesforce is a great partner of ours, and also with Microsoft and others. To bring this to life, as Professor Klaus said, this will be a great enabler to get the SDGs uh, to come to fruit. 
And as uh, has been said, we are committed as an organization to, uh, to enable the SDGs to come to fruit, but the path that we are on will take us to 2073. I'll be long retired, and it'll be my son's children probably that will take uh, advantage of that. So to try and get it done quickly is where this project comes in, is to try and get in one uh, technological solution the ability to get entrepreneurs, to get individuals working on some of the most vexing problems in society together to address them in a collaborative way. Deloitte is honored to be part of this team, and I look forward to uh, getting this to, uh, uh, to done by WEF in, uh, in January of this year. Thank you. Thank you for also helping to make this happen. Salesforce, very glad to be joined by Mark Hawkins, the Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Mark. It's such a pleasure here uh, to be here today and talk on this very, very important and exciting topic. Uh, Deputy Secretary General, Professor Bernit, uh, it's an honor to be on stage with you and to talk on a topic I have tremendous passion for, uh, as does uh, Salesforce. You know, one of the things I have to say uh, at Salesforce is we've always believed that business is one of the greatest platforms for change. It's always been at the beginning and the root of our thoughts of our company, and this is a great opportunity today to begin this continued partnership uh, in that way. The world needs action now, not someday, but now. Uh, and the business leaders we have, we have this responsibility to the future, to really take action and make traction and help re reshape uh, and, and rethink things in a way that will be more sustainable. We're excited to be a part of that, and we're honored to be a part of that as well, I must say. Salesforce has viewed the environment as a key stakeholder from the very beginning and we focused on creating a low carbon future. We have a low carbon uh, product, we have a low carbon orientation, and this is one more opportunity to contribute and partner in a way that is so critical. And then, for example, we just announced a sustainability cloud to help in another way, where we bring technology to really help solve this, uh, this equation, and this in incredibly important topic. I wanna say that we're very aligned with the UK, or this, this, this overall uplink uh, vision, which is to create a, a very globally impactful platform uh, for action and for engagement, for really engaging some of the, the new leaders, the, the, the new entrepreneurs, the new activists uh, that really want to make a powerful difference and really help to address these 17 SDGs. We're very excited about that and to be partnering with them. I was talking to a professor and we thought, thought about how engagement is so important. We've had the opportunity to engage, but we've gone from an exclusive engagement with this capability to really an inclusive engagement around the world at a global, global stage uh, level. And so that's super, super exciting. It gives us a chance, all of us, to activate, not just to contemplate, but to activate in terms of making progress on these critical, critical functionalities. So that is one of the things that I think is really, really important. I also want to address a couple other comments. People ask, like, how does this fit into our strategy at Salesforce? Well, the answer is, Sustainability and SDG topics have always been a part of our mindset as a company from the onset of the company in some form or another. And this just feels so aligned to our strategy as a company. And so we're very, very excited to, to help on that. We expect uh, Uplink to help us make tangible progress uh, and really clearing roadblocks that have been out there in terms of uh, the ability to achieve these SDG goals. And I always think about this. The UN has put forward this amazing vision with these SDG goals. And the vision is part way there. But I think a pathway to the vision is when you really make traction. And I feel like Uplink is part of that pathway. And I think that's exciting from my standpoint. So at the end of the day, we think about this opportunity to partner. We think about you know, how we can support and what we can do. Because I, I've been thinking a lot about this in terms of the topic of sustainability. I think everybody, everywhere, can walk out of every room and decide to activate and do something to help with sustainability. This happens to be something that we want to do and have passion for because it has so much global scale and leverage and is so exciting uh, in that way. But I hope we're all making those choices to get the flywheel of progress going at the rate that we need to. We're, you know, we're incredibly inspired to watch this next generation of leaders, entrepreneurs, and activists really mobilize to save the world. That is powerful. And that's why we're proud to be a partner with the World Economic Forum, 
Uh, we're proud to participate in this and to help develop a more inclusive vision of stakeholder engagement and generate impact on these SDGs. We at Salesforce, uh, our leadership team is committed. Uh, we have a de development team dedicated in that way to the Uplink mission uh, for achieving the SDG goals. It's exciting to have this opportunity to help uh, design this platform that will help global digital communities scale. And on that note, I'd just like to th thank you for being a part of it. And Uplink also wouldn't be helping, uh, be happening without the help and collaboration of LinkedIn Microsoft. Very uh, grateful for the presence of Kate Benkin. Kate, could you come and join us? She's Vice President and Lead of Microsoft Philanthropies. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here and Microsoft is really honoured to be part of this initiative being launched today. Our partnership with the World Economic Forum and partners on Uplink represents an incredible opportunity for Microsoft to participate in, in co-creating a platform that can really serve as a catalyst for engaging entrepreneurs around the world, community leaders, and most importantly, the next generation of leaders to all help build solutions to support the Sustainable Development Goals. We are excited to partner with the World Economic Forum and partners to bring the full digital capabilities of Microsoft to help expand the global engagement and awareness of the Sustainable De Development Goals and solutions. The Sustainable Development Goals represent an effort to create a better and more sustainable future for us all. And this is something that speaks directly to the mission of Microsoft, to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. So we at Microsoft are committed to helping empower countries, UN agencies, and other organizations that are also focused on the SDGs. We believe in the powerful role that technology can play to transform the, wor transform the world and help create better opportunities and a more sustainable future for us all. So thanks very much for the opportunity. Lastly, I'd like to invite my colleague Dominic Warre to come and say a few words on behalf of the forum on the unique aspects of this project. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, esteemed panel members, audience. Um, how many of you out there are kind of interested in working on those solutions for the SDGs? You kind of got an idea, think it's going to be pretty good, very good, lots of you, very good. And how many of you think, God, if only I could find a direct connection to those people with power and influence who can really change the gearing, because my idea could really make something happen out there. There we go, you see. Um, that's why it's called Uplink, because it will connect you to those who actually are at the moment in charge of these big issues across those SDG topics, whether it's food or forests or climate action or indeed the first one that we're going to start with, oceans. Oceans has captured the public imagination of many. Um, and yet, um, those who have the power and the influence um, know all about the problem. As you know, you've read lots of reports, you've seen lots of podcasts and, and videos and such. Um, and they will say things like, this is what we need to do to stop illegal fishing. If only we could do this to make sure that marine protected areas are properly protected. Oh, if only we could scale up aquaculture in a sustainable way. Imagine if we could create those as use cases from those who can make those decisions but need solutions and push them out there globally through the great partnerships that we've just seen here. And you could reply and say, this is how you would do it. This is how you would do it in my region. This is how you would do it in my country. This is how you would do it in my neighborhood. The connection is collapsed. Suddenly, you can connect right up to those people who say, that is a really good idea. And in this uplink network, not only are those who have decision-making capabilities um, across all of the organizations that we know and love, who would love those new ideas, but also people who are not so expert about the issue, but do have a lot of money, which is also a very, very interesting and attractive arena, because there's lots of people who have a very strong desire to solve these problems and are fortunate to work in an organization or to personally have created some wealth, but need your ideas. And how do you get those? You hang around in a tent like this, you hope to meet people, you'll go to conferences, 
imagine a digital platform that can collapse that gap and allow you that access. That is the vision of Uplink, and we will be starting with the ocean agenda. We will have a first product of this at our annual meeting in Davos. If you want to go to the June Ocean Summit, which the United Nations is putting on in Lisbon, be there with your ideas, because that is where the full Uplink version for Ocean will be launched. And about this time next year, we hope to have five or six other SDGs up and running. So if this tent exists um, this time next year, um, SDG Action, we will be delighted to kind of see how far we get with this project. So thank you very much indeed, and thank you for all of the great partners on the panel, um, and we're very, very excited about how this can open up um, the networks and delivery and solutions and effort of you and many others who can't even be here in New York today. Thank you. We, <clears throat> we started a little late. We have a very, very brief window for questions, I'm afraid. I saw lots of hands go up when uh, Dominic asked about ideas for what they'd like to see from Uplink. One of those hands was uh, from someone I recognize, Malati uh, Wieson, who was also the co-chair of the World Economic Forum's Sustainable Development Impact Summit earlier this week. Malati, you lead a, a youth activist uh, network aiming to ban plastic bags. Can you tell us what you'd like to see from Uplink? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Malati. I'm 18 years old, and I had the honor of being one of the co-chairs at the World Economic Forum's event um, the past two days. But also for the last six years, I've worked on banning single-use plastic bags in Bali. And finally, this, mu this summer, we saw the ban come into play. So uh, I'm very excited to see um, Uplink up and coming. Um, but I think also one of the key things here is um, with our next project, Youthtopia, you know, really seeing how we can empower young people further, having access to a platform like Toplink, uh, Uplink would be super helpful because it opens doors to a larger network, um, but also financial opportunities, and also allows us to tap into this unplugged um, wealth of knowledge. So I think that that's my three expectations, especially living in a world where you know, it's becoming smaller with Wi-Fi and smartphone accesses, but the urgency for action is happening at a much faster rate. And so there is a huge need where we need to connect the dots, and I think young people, when we are at the forefront, can really have this um, incredible momentum to create change happening. Um, I think what my takeaway and my last comment would be, um, it's been mentioned in Professor Schwab, you said it as well, this platform, I really think, needs to be done not for us, but with us. And I think that that's where you can count me and Utopia and the younger generation to really be the first ones to sign up and partner and collaborate as best as we can. Thank you. Manati, thank you very much. Um, I'm looking at my watch and seeing that the time has come to return the room to the UN SDG folks. Um, I'm very sorry to cut people off if they had opportunities to ask questions. I know each of our panelists will want to speak to you individually if they're able after this panel, but uh, I hope you'll join in me in thanking all of them for introducing Uplink and be as excited as we are about the opportunity to see it in action uh, in Davos next year and then at the Oceans uh, Summit in June. So please join me in thanking all of our panelists and I hope you get a chance to follow up with them each individually after this session. Thank you very much.